Hold on, Mama Gardener here. It's getting late, late summer now, so I thought I'd take you on a little garden tour. As we go out the back door, the first thing we come to is my wife's uh, flower garden. And uh, we have flowers that's blooming, we have other little flowers that's coming on. So there's going to be a lot of, a lot of nice blossoms here uh, before frost. And then we turn and uh, head towards the kitchen garden. First thing we're going to look at here is the green pepper or the green bell pepper, however you want to say it. Uh, they are really producing well. And uh, even with it's been so dry as it has been, they're still doing okay. Now next to our pepper plants, we have a row of Japanese eggplant. Uh, I think we got five plants in here. And uh, they're doing pretty good. They're making all we want to eat and that's really about all we expect from them and then we go across the rock walkway to the uh, cucumbers and now i will tell you the cucumbers are just about finished uh, once they get real long like this they quit making fruit and spend all their energy trying to make and keep the vine going. And once it gets late, then you get something called a fruit fly. And that's what puts these holes in your cucumber. And inside is going to be a worm. Now here's some rattlesnake pole beans that have gone uh, into the dry stage. So what we'll do with those, we'll collect them and keep them as stored as saved seed for next year. And then we come to our row of uh, super sweet uh, cherry tomatoes. And as you can see, they're producing really, really heavy. And uh, so we eat them, eat them like popcorn, actually. Uh, they're just really good. They're sweet. Uh, just about the right size, uh, bite size. And so as I walk through here, I'll be grabbing them and uh, popping them in my mouth, uh, enjoying their fresh flavor. Now let's get on the tractor and we'll go out to the big garden area uh, out front. We'll look at stuff out there. So now I'm going to put us into a fast forward speed simply because I don't want the video to get overly long. We'll come back to these uh, uh, growing areas right here and talk about them in just a moment. First, I'm going to take you on out to uh, where my squash and some other plants act, where the bees are. So we're going out a little bit further. First, I'm going to walk up here and we'll look at the beehive. I'm 
I'm not suited up to open it, so we'll just take a look at what's going on outside at the entrance. You got all of the bees clustered around the entrance here. Some of them are probably guard bees. Some may be worker bees. And maybe it's just hot and they're trying to help keep the hive a little bit cool. So they look pretty active and look pretty good actually uh, without opening up the hive and see what's going on on the inside. All right, so right here we've got a row and a half about of uh, dark red kidney beans. And on this plant right here, you can see that some of them have now already begun to turn yellow. And that's the time when you want to pick them if you're going to harvest them as shell out beans. Now, if you want them to be dry kidney beans, well, obviously you're going to leave them on the plant until that yellowness turns to a brittle, it likes to get kind of brown color and it'll be more of a brittle uh, uh, texture than what you see right here. Now, what you don't see is how these plants might have been eaten up by the deer. Uh, there are deer tracks around, so I know that deer have came through the area. Uh, but as you look down this row, you'll start to see something that should catch your eye. Uh, and there's one right there. You see that plastic bottle? And there on there is another plastic bottle. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little secret about what's in that bottle, which keeps the deer out of my kidney beans. All right, so here's what you want to do. Cut you three holes in the upper shoulder or upper top portion of your milk jug. Put about two to three cups of water in there and six mothballs. And set up one of those jugs about every six to eight feet along your row of beans or anything that you want to keep the deer out of. And then periodically make sure that the, there's still some water in there and that the mothballs haven't completely gone away. Now over here is a row of yellow crookneck, which you might call summer squash. I planted these plants back in the early spring and here it is uh, late August and they're still going. Haven't been bothered by uh, squash vine, vine borers. And so what I'm doing with these uh, plants right now is letting them go to seed and those uh, warty looking uh, squash that you see will become a seed, saved seed for next year. Now next you see uh, up here on this uh, trellis or frame is a plant called a bitter melon. Now this is my wife's favorite food and so I always try to grow some for her and uh, we've got some really nice ones in here. Uh, and of course a lot of little ones coming on as you see me showing you there as we go through them. There's a really nice one right there and there's another one. Now the fruit of the bitter melon is actually very true to its name. It is really is bitter in taste and probably unless you grew up eating it you would not, uh, you would not like it. Uh, I personally don't care for it myself. However, it is reported to be very good for you health-wise. And now we'll go across this grassy strip and into another garden plot. And this row of tomatoes that you see right here is a variety called Better Boy. They are a indeterminate, so they will go to the top of this cage. And actually they'll go much further than that. But uh, it's been awfully dry, but they're still producing quite good tomatoes as you see that one right there. There are a lot of green tomatoes in here and... We still got a good 60 days before frost, probably more. So all of them are going to ripen up.
Now over here in this large plot, I'm growing buckwheat and I'm growing it primarily for the flowers that will produce for the bees. And now we come to two rows of a tomato variety called Better Bush. It is a determinate type tomato. And actually these are now on the downside. They are almost finished. But uh, it only gets about four feet tall. It will not get to the top of those wire cages as does the Better Boys. And over here we have a permanent type planting of muscadimes. Uh, they're not ripe yet. They won't ripen until a little bit later in the uh, late summer, early fall. And these are a white one. And uh, they're very, very sweet. Produces a lot of fruit. So now let's walk back over to the uh, first couple of uh, garden spaces that uh, we passed as we came in. First, we're going to take a look at a row of pinto beans. Now, pinto beans are not exactly a bush bean. They are a half runner. So that means they're going to produce some pretty good little runners. And that's why you see these uh, concrete reinforcing wire uh, cages for those beans to climb on. Now here I've got a row of late uh, tomatoes. This is a variety called Better Boy, just like the ones we looked at before. And uh, they're producing small tomatoes right now. And so they will be having, a, we will be having a couple picks off of these before frost. And then right next to them is a row of a tomato variety called Celebrity. These are a bush uh, type tomato. So they're probably about as tall as they're going to get. And they'll start to bush out and produce fruit. And then comes the okra patch. I've got uh, two rows of okra that's here that's a little bit later. And I've got five, I think it is, plants uh, over to the right that are much taller. And uh, you'll see as we get close to these large plants that I'm uh, saving seed. If you see that big long okra pod right there, that thing's about nine inches long, nine, ten inches long. And uh, we'll let that go all the way to getting uh, really brown and really dry. But we want to be sure to pick it before it cracks open. So we'll have to keep an eye on that because this is going to be our save seed for next year. Now this is another patch of uh, bitter melon. Uh, my wife planted these here. and. Uh, we haven't taken quite as good a care of these as we did the ones that you saw earlier, but they are producing and they will continue to produce some all the way to frost. Now here's one that's beginning to turn yellow and so it's making, it's uh, maturing and we'll save the seeds on it for next year. So as we look back over this garden plot and we can see in the distance the other garden plots, you know that represents a lot of work for OAG. But it also represents a lot of good homegrown vegetables, and we always like that. So as we walk back to the tractor, I thank you for coming along with me today on a little garden tour. Uh, we haven't started planting our fall garden yet, but uh, we will probably in another, oh, about three weeks. And we'll be planting cabbage and broccoli and kale and beets, uh, Things that grow well in the uh, late autumn. While we're out here, let's grab a few of these uh, dried uh, squash. Take them up to the house and I'll show you my uh, drying rack that I hang these on. Now that yellow top tote there, 18 gallon tote, is where I make up my rabbit poop soup. It stays on the trailer all the time. So here's the dry summer squash. 
they're hanging on a rack here and uh, we'll let them cure let them dry out completely and then we can either store them as they are or we can crack that open and remove the seeds and store the seeds separately.